who is our winner today in uh, Saint of the Day. Saint Benedict, of course, is the uh, saint that we've chosen. I kind of chose that because uh, obviously our, our guest, uh, Melissa, was from uh, is from Saint Benedict's Parish, and they're having that wonderful event over there, Rediscover the Eucharist. So congratulations to Tom. And um, coming up next hour, friends are going to be joined uh, by Father Gary Koch for, with our Gospel Reflection, and then also a very special interview Coming up next hour, we're going to have Bonnie Engstrom join us, and Bonnie is the mother of little James Fulton, and James Fulton was born on September 16th, uh, 2010, uh, but he was born, still born, and after 61 minutes, just when the doctors were going to call a time of death, the little boy's heart began to beat, and uh, so for 61 minutes, the Engstroms began asking for and counting on the powerful intercession of James's namesake, Archbishop Fulton Sheen. And then the fact that the baby was alive is really only part of the story because having been uh, stillborn uh, and, and uh, no signs of life for 61 minutes, they assumed that the little boy would be blind or you know, severely handicapped. No oxygen handicapped. to the brain and other parts of the body. Um, yeah, it's really a miracle. He not only survived, uh, but he, he, he's, he's thriving. So Amazing. anyway, but Bonnie's going to join us next hour to tell us about that. That's the miracle that uh, was approved by the congregation for the the uh, what's the official term? The official uh, office here is the um, uh, the, uh, the cause of saints. I guess congregation for the causes of saints approving this as a miracle attributed to Archbishop Sheen mm -hmm. uh, that is now going to make him a blessed. So uh, we're excited to have Bonnie join us next hour. So be sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, and again, congratulations to Tom, who is our winner uh, of Saint of the Day today. And uh, St. Benedict. Yes, we, uh, Monte Cassino was a um, beautiful monastery. Way up on the hill. That's where the bus driver said many buses, many drivers won't take that road because it was going around the edge of a mountain, no railing. You right. know, and if you're on that side of the bus, you're looking over the edge and you just feel like you're going to fall right down. And I remember I, I, at one point we did pass another bus <laughs> and had to kind of work our way around I know. the bus. Because yeah. there's not a lot, and it's up, you're really uh, literally on the, the side on the cliff. of the cliff of a mountain. Yeah, amazing, uh, but it was gorgeous. There. But the other thing was it was raining that day, remember? So we're it traveling raining, up yeah. and down that cliffside road yep. in the rain. Everybody was just holding their breath, but absolutely breathtaking. Yeah, so that was, uh, and I remember it being very, very, very peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, you can almost feel the peace. Yeah. It was just so quiet. And well, uh, Sometimes, too, at a, at a certain altitude, you know, you just you pass the point where you can hear just the busy noise down on right, the street or right. the village, and it's it's all peaceful and quiet anyway because you're in Tuscany, but um, very very peaceful. And then all those thick cement or brick, you know, the walls. It's very very quiet. Those giant doors that close behind you, and you really you go back in time to the year four or five hundred. Right. I'd love to go and spend several days if you could, like on a retreat or. A silent retreat. Uh, Where up there? Just, yeah, wouldn't that be beautiful? Actually, it wasn't in Tuscany. Wasn't it south of Rome? I thought it was south of Rome. Maybe. I think it was south of Rome. But, but still, yeah. you're out in the country. You are. And you know, just a quick, if we have a second, uh, a thank you, Jesus, because talking about babies, our um, relative, now it's our son Anthony's wife's brother. Our daughter-in-law's niece. How about that? Yeah, so through marriage, we, ha we have a little baby born, Esther, on September 29th. And I know the guardian angels surrounded her because today, finally, she's going home from the hospital. So we were talking about that with premature lungs and inability to breathe. And she was on a respirator and mm. in an incubator. And they were just all, they couldn't even hold the baby for several days or try to nurse nothing. And now here it is, n not quite two weeks, and she's going home going off home, of yeah. all the apparatus and machinery and just looks beautiful. So I think that's another little, just thank you, God, for that. And she was born, her name is Esther Clark. Mm -hmm. She was born on the Feast of the Archangels. Mm -hmm. right? September 29th. Yeah. And so today's only uh, October 11th. So you're looking at couple of weeks yeah, there not, to not be going long. home because initially it was very very oh, yeah, serious they, they flew her to a larger hospital and got her right to you know the right i mentioned it here on the program we mentioned care. it last week i think too we talked about mm -hmm. it and um, people were praying mm -hmm. so and also so you, we know we talk about prayers and miracles 
Our young friend Maria, uh, for whom we've been praying all year because of the tumor on her brain stem, um, uh, I guess a, a, a number of months ago, uh, her, she and her family received a, a information from a school in Uganda that children were praying for her. I don't know how right. they found out about her, but they sent a picture of the children all holding up this, so these signs. Yeah, we're, praying we're praying for, for you, for Maria. You yeah. Well, I, I talked to, to Maria's dad last night. We were having a little conversation about a few things, and uh, he mentioned that they're taking her over to Uganda later this month to meet the children So, as part of her journey. So uh, keep praying for that intention because we're waiting for the, the big miracle where the, the tumor vanishes. And speaking of Archbishop Sheen, and we will be next hour, um, still no official date for his beatification, uh, but I did check out their website and... Um, you know, there there will be tickets required because of the. Mm. It's you know it's not like they have a, they have a beatification in Rome where you can fit seventy thousand people in St. Peter's in Square. Piazza, this is in right. this is in a little in a little but a cathedral, uh, in Peoria. So where he is now entombed. So we'll keep an eye on that because I think that'd be a great a great pilgrimage to go on if we can get. But think back to when it was Mother Angelica's funeral. Mm. So you needed a ticket. You know, you needed a reserved spot in the church in the cathedral. But then there were hundreds outside. Outside. Well, they had the piazza there too, though. And they I had don't know a large the, screen. I don't know. I don't what, know what the Peoria Cathedral is like. Yeah. Think about the cathedral in, in Phoenix when we were there. That you couldn't do that there. No, there would be no place uh, to yeah, even so stand. Is, but. Yeah. Anyway, so we'll keep an eye on that, friends. And don't you go away. There's more to come on Friday Live. As I said, coming up, our gospel reading and our reflection today by Father Gary Koch, pastor of St. Benedict's over in Homedale. And then later next hour, Bonnie Engstrom is going to join us to talk about 61 Minutes to a Miracle, this beautiful story of her stillborn son being brought to life through the intercession of Archbishop Sheen. So stay where you are. We'll be right back.